How's everyone doing? Is that a yes? Is that a no? Good. Just look, look, look to someone next to you and just tell them how you're doing. Or ask someone how you're doing. privilege to meet again. Uh, we're going to start with a prayer. Uh, welcome. Uh, Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you have made, and we thank you that you're with us, um, and we can know that as a fact, Father, that you are with us. You go before us, and Father, we know that you're with us in this place, and as we sing today, may uh, your praises be lifted up, Father. May you inhabit everything we, all the praises we sing today, Father. We ask for your presence, and we ask for your guidance, to just lead us today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Just the vocals today. continue in a moment. There'll be some announcements in a moment. That's, does the microphone work? Oh, no, I think so. Um, welcome every day, everyone. It's so great to see you all. We are together here in the name of Jesus, the lion and the lamb who has come into the flesh. And that is why we know each other, and that is so great. Some of uh, you I see here for the first time Who's here for the first time? Please raise your hand. We have a small gift for you. And he has dipped. Uh, we have quite a number of people. Yeah. And I think here a person still. Thank you for visiting us. I hope that you will have, that you will enjoy this time, that you will have a blessed time, and that you will feel the presence of the Lord and be strengthened for the coming week and actually for your whole life. Um, there is a small card on it if you would like to fill it out so we can know who has visited us we can know a little bit more about you uh, we would find it uh, really great and i believe there is also a line where you could put uh, if you have one a prayer request um, then um, for all parents who brought children here there will be children's church uh, through this door in the town cell as we call it and um, also parents with children between zero and three years old, there is a mother's room. I don't know why they call, don't call it parents' room. Um, where you can sit and where you can follow the sermon uh, on a television screen um, to care for your children there. Um, then our weekly activities. On every Tuesday from seven to t eight, and on every Sunday, just before the sermon, uh, or be before the service from a quarter to uh, quarter past two, two, a quarter to three, we will have intercession. We pray with each other, we pray for the church, we pray for Utrecht, we pray for um, those kind of things, uh, and we try to listen to the voice of God, to see what God has to say to us. Um, please contact, I would say, René and Derek Jan are not here today, uh, is Urban is here? Yes, he's sitting there in the red jacket. You can contact him if you want to have a link to the meeting um, on Tuesdays. And on Sundays it is just here in the back, so you don't need to contact anybody. Then in the weeks there are small groups, and that is really, I encourage everyone, who goes here to a small group? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, that's about, that's just more than half. I can really encourage you, if you haven't joined, uh, uh, joined a small group yet, uh, join one because it, is, uh, it really helps in your spiritual life. You can share what you heard on Sunday or you can share the issues you have in the week. I believe we have a one for young professionals, for mothers, for families, for students and um, a few mixed ones. There's one in Nieuwegein even. And um, also Urbanus has, also in the red jacket over there, has more information on that. And then we have coming up, and I think that's really great, what we call Encounter 2. Encounter is a series to um, build your life with God, to investigate that how that is and, uh, um, and how to grow in that. And the Encounter 2 talks about your relationship with the church, your relationship with Shofar and the church, and what is church actually, and 
how do you serve? How do you serve God? I really, I have done it myself. I think it is really good, and I think it is really important. So if you haven't done it yet, um, it is on the 22nd of October, as it says on there, and it is from 10 to 5 on a Saturday. In the back, through that door again, there is a uh, table with information where you can also leave your card, by the way, and there you can sign up for it. I will be there as well. And then after the service, you are more than invited to have coffee, tea, or something else with, us, uh, with a cookie. Um, so uh, we can have fellowship with each other uh, that way. And then is it now time for the offering message by Ba Mish. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Banish and I'm doing today the offering message. And uh, the offering message is taken from John chapter 3 verse 16. And I hope that we, everyone knows this verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. And w when I was praying about the offering message God gave me this verse and I was trying to make sense of it like why uh, he has put this verse in my heart and he, he reminded me you know like um, every year now it's coming like the December that we most of the expats we try to go back to our family and visit our family and when we whenever we go back to our family you know we we try to bring different gifts for our family member, especially uh, me and my wife, we try to uh, find something which is very unique, which we don't get in India, you know, or else they will see, feel like uh, they brought it from uh, maybe airport or customs uh, free, you know. And so we try to find something which is very unique. And uh, God was reminding me that uh, we bring these gifts out of love, not out of feeling or not out of obligation that people are expecting us to bring gift. And that's what we should do, that whenever we bring offering to God, it shouldn't be from our feeling or it shouldn't be from uh, out of obligation, but it's an offering that we bring to God for his kingdom, for his vision, for, I won't say it's church vision, but it's Jesus' vision, it's God's vision to reach out to people. And yeah, we, we can help and support the church so that it, people can reach out. They can reach out to the people of this city out of our love for this city, out of our love for the lost people. So let us come and uh, yeah, mm, uh, offer what we have out of our love for God, for the people who are lost. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. Thank you that you gave your only begotten son, Lord. You gave your only son for us, Lord, so that we can reconcile, we can come back to you, Lord. We can call you Abba Father. We can be accepted we can become holy thank you lord thank you for washing us with the blood of jesus christ thank you lord we pray for the offering lord lord let it be used for your kingdom let it be used for your mission lord in jesus name we pray amen you can uh, give the offering we have multiple ways of giving the offering you can give by cash uh, we have a offering bag at the town hall uh, we can you can also give it by uh, scanning the qr code or uh, you can also do an uh, bank transfer so yeah feel free and uh, if you are a visitor visiting us for the first time please don't feel obliged to give thank you
search the world But it couldn't fill me A man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough That you came along And put me back together Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, because the God of the mountains is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace will find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing.
And your, your wonderful spirit that is here amongst us. We thank you, Lord God, that we can open up our hearts freely without any fear because you are such a loving, wonderful God that has planned and ordained this special time, this special time in our presence together as your body, Lord God. You have written it in the eternal diary. And we, we know that through your word, that when two or more are together, there you are. We welcome your spirit. We welcome you, Jesus Christ, into this, into this building and into our hearts, Lord God. We thank you so much that we can experience a peace beyond all understanding. We can hear the quiet in our hearts when our hearts settle down without fear and without the world speaking to us so much hatred or negative things, Lord God. We can lay it all down at your feet, Jesus Christ. 
and we can receive your love and your acceptance and the joy that you have over us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that this time together brings us in your presence and brings you in amongst us and allows us to forget or lay down all the cares of the world, to lay it at your feet, Jesus Christ. And we thank you that we can be expectant for in that quiet, peaceful moment, we hear your still, small voice saying that I love you. I love you, my child. My child, I love you so, so very much. I will lay down my life for you. We honor you, Jesus. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to experience the peace of God's presence? We would like to pray for the kids before they go for uh, the children's ministry. Myla, thanks. Let's hold hands. You want to hold hands? Huh? Yeah? Yes. Ah, oh, these precious children. Do you want to hold hands? No? Okay, that's fine. Don't worry. Just stand there. Okay. We're just going to pray for these kids, children. And yeah, we normally just ask for everyone to extend their hands as a sign of yeah, just agreeing and sharing your blessing with them. Lord Jesus, thank you for these wonderful children that can come today and you learn about your word, Lord God. We pray that you would touch their hearts, show them the joy that, is, that there is in you and that there is through you and together as your body. I pray a special blessing of a Myla that will, that will minister to them today, and that this time together will be blessed and exciting and full of fun, just sharing and knowing that, that we can come into your presence with joy and with gladness, just as these young children do. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Enjoy, everyone. See you later. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, for those first-time visitors. My name is Christo Versteer. I'll be ministering to you this evening with a wonderful word, a very encouraging word, and a very exciting word that I, that I love to share about and talk about. It actually continues with a series I'm preaching about, um, about legacy. I'm very passionate about legacy and family. And uh, this is, this is um, in the legacy series of uh, Godly Purpose, um, in, the, in the Godly Legacy series, today we're talking about godly purpose. Purpose. And I think this title is so, so interesting, and it takes some time to think about it and meditate about it. But write it down somewhere big, in your room, on your journal. God made you on purpose. God made you on purpose. And that's what we are going to explore today, this word purpose. Um, I would like to, yes, ask some deep, maybe philosophical questions, but questions that, are, that speaks to the root of our, our purpose and our understanding of our purpose. And I have some examples here because the word purpose Sometimes it's difficult to understand. If I tell you that we have a chair, and I ask you, what's the purpose of this chair? It's quite easy. It's to sit on. It's clear. It's clear from the function of what you have, what the purpose is. What the purpose is. I also have this piece of art, <laughs> and as a, as a very technically minded person, as a, from an engineering background, I always struggle to see what, why was this created? What's the function of this, this piece of art? What does it do, I ask, because I think very, very technically about this. 
What is the purpose of this artwork? It looks nice. The artwork, its purpose, is not necessarily connected to its function. It's more related to the intention of the creator. The creator had a purpose in mind to share when he created this artwork. And today we can, we're going to stand still at this, at this topic of, of purpose and we're going to not just look, because I've, I believe as, as, as human beings we're sometimes just reduced to our function and that is taken as your purpose in life. But I believe that we have more purposes connected as the artwork has related to the creator and the intention of the creator. And for that, we need to understand how God speaks about purpose in his word. We're going to, deep, we're going to dive a bit into, into the word of God and we're going to look um, at what God speaks about purpose. God is very passionate about purpose as we read in Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is very passionate about his purpose in our lives and about our purpose in this, in this life. And we have a couple of questions that we're going to look at to answer that, which asks ourselves, why am I here? Why am I on earth? Is it just the result of a biological mechanism? Or is there a deeper purpose connected to our lives? We also ask, why now? Why not a thousand years before or a thousand years after? Why now? What makes it so wonderful that you are specifically here at this moment? What is the purpose of, your, um, uh, of being born in this, in this time and now? And then lastly, why, why, why did Jesus die on the cross? What was the purpose of Jesus, the Son of God, coming to earth and dying on the cross? Why are you here? Have you ever had the, the time to stand still and ask yourself that question, why am I here? Is it a question that you dare not ask because the world just tells us that we are here for no other reason than by our parents' uh, um, having a desire for a child. You are here just to work nine to five until you have sufficient income saved up for a pension. No, I believe there's much more than that. And to learn about purpose, I referred, I took a lot from the book of Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life. And I don't know who of you have, have heard about this book. Maybe it was quite popular when I was at, at university. Um, but this book is one of the, the most well-written, most insightful books that help you to, and takes you through a journey of discovering your purpose and all the facets of your purpose in all the facets of your life. I can highly recommend it. And basically today, I'm going to give you a short summary of what is in here. Just like a, to get you excited or to get you maybe interested in getting yourselves this book and using the 40-day plan that Rick recommends to really dive deep into God's Word, to learn about God's purpose in our lives and also to learn about your own purpose um, it's really, an, it's really an incredible book. So 
you will pick up a lot of the topics that he mentioned in here in today's sermon. And yeah, I can really recommend it to you um, to buy it from. Where did you get yours, Mahesh? Bold.com. Is it really? Yeah. So you can get it from bold.com. Why am I here? We can ask that question and we can get the answer from the internet. There are many sources that describe what is your purpose, how do you build a lasting a, a, a business with a lasting legacy. But as Christians, we know that God is the author and creator of life. He's not just the starting point of light, he's, he's also the source of life. And we're going to look to him and to his word to define our purpose. Once we know our purpose, it's our responsibility to understand and to fulfill that person, for that purpose. Now, as created beings, as, as, as human beings, God's word speaks about our first purpose, worshiping him. The word has many verses about David worshiping God, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. We know that when we speak about worship, we typically associate it with singing in the church. But do you know that our lives can be a worship unto him by loving him, by trusting him and in obedience to him. When we love God, when we trust him and when we obey him, I can just, in my mind's eye, and, and the Bible speaks about his, he smiles at it. It brings him joy. This is our purpose, to bring him joy through our worship. When we use our abilities for his glory, when we labor for him, when we build um, into relationships and into his church, part of his plan and part of his purpose that brings joy to God. The second purpose is to grow. Just as God didn't make us just purely for as a functional part, all right, everybody go to earth, you need to tend it, you need to look after it, you need to give the animal names. God doesn't just purely define our purpose through our function on earth, but our purpose is also to journey with him in our growing as more mature Christians. We grow in our relationship with God. God enjoys walking the path with you, this journey of finding your, your true self in the kingdom of God as a Christian, We're reading through his word and learning about him. We can grow our friendship with God. We grow it through prayer, when you attend intercession, you learn about God's heart for the church and for Nijmegen and for Shofar Utrecht and for the people of Utrecht and Netherlands and over the world. Meditation. Reading God's word. Studying it. Understanding what the scriptures mean. How they fulfill each other. It's so easy for us to take one scripture out of context, not understanding what God meant with it. But when you have the full picture, when you've read through the Bible, you understand the context. You understand God's heart with that scripture, and we grow closer to him. Honesty. When we come to God and we kneel before him and we lay our, our cares and our worries at his feet, 
when we are honest about our struggles and about what worries us and about what we, what we care about. God loves that. He loves that intimate time with us. It makes his heart so happy to see you come into his presence and just be yourself wherever you are in your life. And obedience. Sometimes we want to do something, we've got free will, but when we say, I would rather do God's will and we lay down our free will to follow God and we obey his instructions, that brings God joy. When we grow together with God, as we grow together with God, our growth gets accelerated and gets cemented by starting to make good decisions. Every, deci- every day you get the opportunity to make decisions in your life. Make them good ones. Abiding in God's word and persevering through temptations. Also connected to that obedience. If we are coming into, as young believers, we come with a sinful nature that's been established in our, through our lifestyle, our sinful lifestyle. And God invites us to lay it down and to renew our minds because we are now a new creation. And we can renew our mind by walking by the Spirit, praying in tongues, praying in your inner room, repentance, when you read God's word and his guidelines or his his instructions for us are clear and we know that we are outside of God's word. Repentance, that act of repentance is what changes and what renews your mind. Reading God's word, letting it wash over you, letting his words of encouragement, his prophecies, his instructions, and his parables. Once you go from reading into understanding the word, God shapes you because we cannot be the same when we enter God's presence and when we leave it. And the lastly, persevering through trouble and temptations. It is a sinful world out there. There are many, many troubles and temptations. And when we trust in God, as we persevere through those, we grow closer to him because we are in a stronger relationship with God. The last topic I want to cover, when we ask about why am I here, why did God create me, relates to God's church, to our ministry in his, to his body. It is not an optional, it's not optional for us to be part of a church and to serve in a church. This is, Our service to believers is what gives our lives meaning and significance. Sometimes we we send someone that's off to a new era in their life that have finished studies and that's off to go work in a different country and to see how their hearts were touched by the love that they experienced in their small groups to see the joy in their, in, their, in their eyes because of the restoration that they experienced through doing Bible school and the foundations. It always touches my heart when we see people going through this journey, enjoying life with each other. And it's not that the pastor has ministered something specifically to them. It was through the love and the care of other members of the church in the small groups where they could experience real love and real care, the real love of Jesus Christ.
these topics speak to our created purpose. Why are humans created on earth? We worship God, we grow closer to God, and we serve in our church. Let's move to the second question. Why now? Why were you born in the year 2009, in the year 1981, in the 20th century? Why are we here at this moment? Why were you born at a certain place in South Africa or in the Netherlands or in India? Why were you born specifically there? What is the purpose of, your, of you being you at that specific time and moment? Why were you born to that specific family? Therefore, we look at what is our purpose as children and as grandchildren in a family. We have to ask ourselves, I have two parents, I have siblings, I have grandparents. Why are these people in my life? Why am I in their lives? And we can look at these things separately because we have a purpose as a child, we have a purpose as a parent and even as a grandparent. What is the purpose of a child? <laughs> they don't have a clear function, right? So I can at least, as, as an adult, I can say I can, I can work and I can, I can bring in finances. But in a family, what is the purpose of children? It's not clear. They don't, they don't really add much to the family, but God brings them as a blessing to us as parents. God has created children with an inherent purpose. There are many, if you, if you go back to the godly family sermon I preached, um, as part of the first, the first sermon I preached, there you can learn about the role of children in a family. But for today, I would like to highlight one scripture in Matthew 19, verse 19. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Honor is, is a very powerful word. And when I read the scripture, I felt that God spoke to me to, to tell some of you that, that come from broken families. Some of you might have, have disabilities. You might think that you're just... that you don't have any purpose in that family. And when I read the scripture, it, it became so clear to me that God says that, that each child has a purpose in their family. When you honor your parents, you fulfill that purpose that God gave you as a child in that family. And yes, families are, are difficult and complex. You might have absent parents. How do you honor your absent parents? And the word I received from God is that we can still honor our parents through prayer. Honor your parents in your prayer. Even if they're not physically there. And there are many other ways that we can honor our parents in our speech and physically. And um, I've spoken about that um, a lot. So um, I want to move on to our purpose as, as parents. Of course, we can again look at the function of parents in a family. And that is clear. And a lot of the times we get stuck with, you just have to provide 
and you just have to have to nurture. I mean, it's it's important for us for families to have parents; otherwise, the children will not make it in the first six years. Parents are quite quite important for those times. As humans, we just don't develop fast enough to be self-sufficient. We need parents, yes. But what is God's purpose for you as the parent of that child? And two scriptures um, uh, came to mind. Proverbs 1 verse 8 and Proverbs 6 verse 20. Proverbs 1 verse 8 that says, Listen to my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. The second scripture, Proverbs 6, verse 20, says, My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Twice, the author of Proverbs, Solomon, I'm not sure, speaks about the children having to listen to their father's instruction and commands. All right, let's turn it around. What is the purpose of the father if you read the scripture? To give instruction and commands, right? What is the purpose of the mother if you turn these scriptures around? Teach. There are many more, but I just felt that these scriptures are so so important for us to stand still and to know that Yes, our children are raised very, very independently, especially in, in this country that we live in. Children are, from 18, seen as independent adults that can function completely on their own. But remember your purpose as a parent. Remember to speak out if you see your child your child walking the path unto destruction. Do not hesitate as a mother to spend time with your child and to explain to them how life works. It is not for them to find it out the hard way through hardships and through mistakes that could cost them dearly. Spend the time with them and teach them about God's word Teach them about your own experiences. Teach them about your own life. It is your purpose. Lastly, our purpose as grandparents. I don't know how many grandparents we have in the house. Do we have any grandparents in the house? Of course, maybe if you're listening from on Facebook, your purpose as a grand. Parent is to spoil your kids and buy them lots of presents and, uh, <laughs> and of course, to, to um, look after them for a night or two so that your parents can go for a night out. That's, that's of course, the, the purpose. It's very clear. No. Just joking. The purpose of the grandparent is something that's very much neglected in today's society. But grandparents are ostracized, they are kept in old age homes, they are pushed away as being old and irrelevant in today's. But God made grandparents with a specific purpose as part of the family unit. What touched me was my grandmother that always reminded us of how much she prayed for us, how much she She deeply sought God for the revelation of himself in all our lives. And we can see in her family of eight children, all of them are blessed and close to God. Grandparents have a very, very specific purpose, especially for prayer. Grandparents, the the idea of grandparents being part of a family touches on the decisions that I made in my life and in my family, where I reached out to my grand, my father, who is the grandchild of my my son, sitting over there, and I told him that I don't want us 
to live disconnected from each other, one generation just making his own means. I would like us to be an integrated family, and I would like to be the leverage of your legacy. And my father didn't understand it at first, but as soon as I told him, whatever you want to impart or whatever you want to transfer to your grandchildren, I will be the multiplication factor. I will be the fulcrum so that whatever you, you share with your child gets amplified through me into their lives. It is a bit different in the world where you're just living your life until, or supporting your kids until they're 18 and then they have their own life. I believe God, when he says that a good man leaves inheritance for his children's children, God speaks about this family interconnection where the grandparent has got something to give. And as Christians, as, as a son in the house, I believe I can be an, a multiplication factor for that. And I will preach about that in the next sermon. So you'll have to come back for that one. But it is quite, quite incredible to see what the impact is if we have godly grandparents sowing into the lives of their grandchildren and helping them to accelerate their growth and their position um, uh, on, on earth. All right. We've looked at our purpose as created beings by God. We've looked at our purpose in the here and now. We've looked at our purpose in our family very shortly. But what Rick does in his, in his book is he takes us on a journey on, all right, how do we fulfill our purpose? How do we fulfill our purpose? And he's got an acronym called SHAPE. You fulfill your purpose through your shape as a person. And it's, it's a, an acronym for the, for the following words. Spiritual gifts, your heart, your abilities, your personality, and your emotion. Through these factors, you are going to experience your life in a church, you're going to experience your life in a family, and what you offer, or how you fulfill your purpose is through these, through these, call it topics, or through these aspects of yourself. Because you can only give what you have, right? And you have, what you have is yourself. And I believe to understand them gives us a more focused vision about how we can apply and reach our purpose. Let's go into, into them individually. Let's look at spiritual gifts, gifts of the Spirit. And in God's church and in God's family, we come and we pray for people. We have words of encouragement. We have words of wisdom for each other. These spiritual gifts are not earned by us. They are given by God. They are a gift from God to us. What is interesting about spiritual gifts is they are not here for your, you're not, they're not given to you for your own benefit. They are given to you for the benefit of others. And when you understand that your spiritual gift is for the benefit of others, then you should also know that other people's, you need other people's spiritual gifts. You need to allow people to minister in your life. You need to open up your heart for people to also share and work their, their, um, their spiritual gifts. And we need to give the room and the opportunity for people to, to, to practice their spiritual gifts. The H in shape, your heart. Your heart is 
It's a concept you find in the Bible, and if you look into yourself and you ask, why do I say what I say? Why do I do what I do, and why do I feel the way I feel? Those are all birthed in your desires, hopes, interests, ambition, dreams, and affections. What motivates you comes from your heart. You might say that I have very poor motivations. When I look into my heart, it looks dark and I don't like who I am. Which is exactly why God invites us to give our hearts to him. Give your heart to the Lord and he will make you fresh and new. You will be reborn, washed as white as snow, a new creation as he speaks in his word so that we can serve him wholeheartedly. The third, the A in shape speaks of abilities, your natural talents that you are born with. They are closely tied to the, to the ministries we find in church. Sometimes you need someone that's strong with an athletic ability to, to carry something. Sometimes you need someone with, with a musical talent to minister the worship. Sometimes you need someone with good physical coordination or with planning abilities to arrange everything, with numbers for bookkeeping um, and mechanics for the stage and, and, and some, some practical topics in the church. You need to find your ability, know that what you are good in, and serve in that. God made you that way. If you find that you're striving to do this because you feel obliged or you feel it, to, you have to participate in this ministry out of obligation, you will find that frustration creeps up because it's not in your nature. It wasn't your purpose. Pray to God to show you where he wants you to serve in his church. This P of shape stands for personality. And in a church, we have such an amazing variety of different people, introverts, extroverts, people that love routine, that are very systematic, that love planning. You get people that love variety to be free-spirited. We need to give each other that space to live their own life through their own personality. You get thinkers and feelers, people that want to think about a topic, um, that want to discuss the intricacies of the, the, the Hebrew word and their meaning you get people that are feelers, that want to experience God. It's different types of personalities. You might be an introvert, but you feel God has given you a calling for evangelism. From the typical idea of an evangelist, this person that preaches, you feel conflicted. God, how can I do this? How can I stand up in front of people and speak to them about your love and about um, uh, your, your death on the cross? How can I do an altar call? I don't have that, 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 that personality. God says, yes, but that's not what I called you. You can even be an evangelist as an introvert, just sitting and having a coffee with someone and speaking to them about the love of God and and sharing your, your testimony with them. That is just as much evangelism as the preacher that stands on there with this boldness. The E in shape speaks of our emotion. Emotions form a very important part of our church and of church communities. Each one grows up 
into this family, into their families, their family experience could impact your emotion. You might have had a tough education and this, all of these things stir up certain emotions in certain situations in your workplace and in your spiritual ministry. You might have come across something that, that brought pain or something that you regretted or you experienced resentment or you are resenting someone. We need to know that this is our emotional part that we also sometimes need to lay before God and allow God to give us that intelligence to look at our emotions and how we react and how we feel about a certain situation and to know the root cause of it, to look at God's word for what is his plan and what is his ideal and to say that, no, I'm not joining a church. Oh yes, it's, it was because of that root of offense. Lay it before God because God's desire is for us to be in a godly family, serving each other. Once you realize that emotion is in a part of you, but it is not, you're not defined by your emotion, then I believe we can overcome it and we can really walk into our purpose. Because sometimes we allow our emotions to block us from fulfilling our purpose. And that is truly sad. Lastly, we ask the question, why did Jesus die on the cross? That horrific death, what was, what was God's purpose with it? God, isn't there another way? Why? Why does your son have to suffer such a brutal, brutal death? It, it touches um, on a deep revelation of, of the purpose of humanity. If we have this example of Jesus dying on the cross, but for most people that haven't heard of the gospel, and you tell them about God, they say, but where is God? And what is he, what is he doing on earth? For them, it almost feels like God made this creation. If you tell, if you tell them that we have the creator, it's like, all right, but maybe he just took us and then created us and then placed us somewhere and put a lid on it, and then every now and then he looks in to see how it's going, you know? What we read in God's word is that he is intimately, passionately involved in every human being on earth. God knows how many hairs is on your head. And for that reason, in his word, he also shared what is his purpose as God of heaven and earth in our lives? What is, his, what is his purpose? And I want to explore that a bit because we think that God is distant and disinterested, but he is very, very emotionally involved in us as human beings. He, he's, let's read Romans 8. Verse 28 again. And we know in all things God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God has a purpose. He has had a purpose since the beginning of time to allow us as his children, to enter into heaven one day and share an eternity with him. It's sometimes difficult to see how God is involved in our lives through the hardships, 
suffering and bitter disappointments. But as we read in Romans 8 verse 28, God has a purpose with our lives. And his purpose is to ultimately make everything work out for good. Even if it is unto death and we enter in with him into, the, into heaven. Proverbs 19 verse 21. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. We feel that we have an ambition in our life, but sometimes we need to become quiet and hear and ask God, God, is, what is your purpose for me? Isaiah 55 verse 11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God has a purpose with your life. And that purpose, he will help you to reach that purpose. You can trust God and you can rely on God to be intimately a part of your life and to reach that purpose. What is the wonderful thing about a purpose? Is that it speaks of God's intention. It speaks of God's deliberate plan for your life. He hasn't just placed you on earth and he's watching from a distance how, is it, how it's going. He wants to be intimately involved in every facet of your life. I'm going to ask the band to come up and to just minister to our hearts. Because when we look at God's commitment to fulfilling our purpose, we also have to realize that God has had a purpose, an eternal purpose, since the creation of time for us to share with him eternal glory in heaven. When Jesus died on the cross, that purpose of redemption, that purpose of reconciliation that God has worked to establish for thousands of years through multiple generations were fulfilled and God's purpose was to reunite us, to allow us to, through in, in this life that we currently have, to enter into His throne room. God had a purpose since the fall of mankind when Eve, when, he, when, when, when God spoke to Adam and Eve and said, you will bruise um, I will bruise, uh, I will bruise uh, he will bruise your heel, and I will um, step on your head. God knew that he has to work. His purpose, he has, an, he has accepted the purpose of reconciling us with him. And Jesus came on earth knowing full well what was his purpose. In the garden of Gethsemane, he was praying to God, God, if it is your will, let this cup pass from me, but if it is your will, I lay down my life. God is committed to fulfilling His purpose in our lives. God is committed to, to, to join you in fulfilling your purpose for your life. No longer do we just continue with this rat race. We can step back we can step into God's word. We can read about what God wants to show us, about what was your purpose. I believe that once you get that revelation, you start to have a focus in your life. You start to have direction in your life because you know that you have to fulfill a purpose, a God-given purpose. And I'm going to pray now 
We're going to close our eyes and we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to open our eyes, to take us out of this, this daily rituals that we have and to show us the wonder of our purpose. Let's pray. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you have a specific purpose for each person here. Lord God, and that you are intimately involved in seeing everyone's purpose established on this earth. And we know that it is your heart's desire for them to grow closer to you and to live out their purpose, Lord God, even though they just bring themselves as an offering. Lord God, but we also acknowledge that sometimes we just don't know what our purpose is. We feel like we just wander aimlessly in this world. We feel that, that life has no purpose. There's nothing for me to continue. We feel that, that, that the things that, that you speak of in your word that are supposed to be a blessing are, have brought so much pain and suffering, Lord God. What, is, what was the purpose of all of that? And Lord Jesus, we know that, that, that you have an ultimate purpose. You have the ultimate purpose of of taking us through the storm, of carrying us when we cannot walk anymore. But more than that, Lord God, we pray that you would reveal your purpose for our lives. If you're here today and you want to say to God, God, I don't know what is my purpose in life. Currently, I just feel aiming aimlessly walking about just just following my, my my instincts Lord God I want to I want to I want to have a purpose for my life would you raise your hand let me just pray together today raise your hand say God I want to have a firm understanding of my purpose I want to know what it is that I wake up for every morning Raise your hand if you want to commit that purpose to God and ask God to help you in your purpose. Wonderful. Lord God, if I can, if I can pray a blessing over these, the purpose of everyone here and everyone that raised their hands, Lord God, I pray that this purpose would ignite a burning flame in their hearts, Lord God, that every day, when they struggle to wake up, you will remind them of their purpose. Their purpose, sometimes a mystery for the day, sometimes a clear direction of what they need to achieve, Lord God. And we know that this purpose extends just far beyond the material wealth, Lord God. But we speak about an eternal purpose, Lord God. Every love we give, every bit of love we give, every word of encouragement we speak, every act of kindness we do, Lord God. Thank you that that purpose is fulfilled and it brings eternal fruits, Lord God. We pray that you would take us on a journey to reveal the wonderful facets of our purpose, Lord God. We pray that you would come and bring a peace in our heart, knowing that we are fulfilling our purpose and we don't need to strive you have made us for this purpose. You have made me as this jar of clay with a specific purpose. And we can find peace in that, Lord God, and joy and fulfillment. I also want to pray today that if you haven't given yourself for God, you've never prayed, God, I want to fulfill your purpose as a child of God. If you've never prayed that, I want to invite you today to also raise your hand and to say, God, the purpose that I've been striving for all my life 
is meaningless. The things that I've achieved, the career ladders that I have climbed, have all come to nothing, Lord God. And I want to give my life to you to share with me your purpose for our lives as people on earth, Lord God. If that is you today, would you raise your hands? Say yes to God. Say yes, Lord. I accept your purpose, your word, how you, what you share in your word as our purpose. I accept your Holy Spirit that's tugging on my heart to follow your purpose and to accept your purpose in my life. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful time that we could spend in your presence, Lord God, learning from your word about the wonderful journey that we can share with you, not just worshiping you, but and not just, not just living a life and, and surviving, Lord God, but we can have a life that is deeply rooted in your purpose that you share with us in your word, Lord God. We thank you that our life forward will not be aimless. It will be deliberate steps to fulfill your purpose for our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. If you need prayer, please come and pray with someone. If you feel that need, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks. Go for it. So we're going to worship a few more songs. You're welcome to join. But the coffee and tea is already at the back, so we can also go there. Um, please just respect everybody that's praying and worshiping and have your conversations on the other side as well.
Thank you. 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. I want to see. continue with one worship song and let's just pray to close. Father, we just thank you that you care so much about us, Lord. You care about our well-being, you care about our hearts, our spirits, our salvation. Lord, we just thank you that you are the author and the finisher of our faith and that when we walk out of this place, it's not the finished product, but just the continuation, Lord. And we just pray that the word that was given today will be deep in our hearts as we go about this week we can just continue to be open to you and to what you're doing in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.